In 2006, writer David Edelstein wrote an article where he coined the phrase torture porn as a means to describe and replace the horror genre known as splatter. In it, he claims that films basically serve as pornography made by sadists to an audience filled with masochists. I always thought that this take on splatter was hopefully disrespectful, and that the folks who use the phrase torture porn to describe the genre were disrespectful themselves. That is, until I realized the wide scope of people who were using this phrase. I have heard friends of mine refer to hostile as, isn't that just torture porn? And I have heard respected film-loving podcasts dismiss movies like Hostel as just some torture porn. It feels so weird to me to be so dismissive of an entire subgenre of horror, and frankly, with all the incredibly well-crafted splatter films out there, it seemed a little bizarre. One of the most influential horror films of all time is without a doubt Lucio Fulci's Zombie 2, Zombie Flesh Eaters, or otherwise simply called Zombie because it's incredibly influential makeup and costume design that would inspire more modern takes of what zombies would come to look like in the future, it is also worth pointing out this gory scene. Fulci was known as the maestro of gore, but gore is not the only thing at play here. It is the anticipation of gore. Director Alfred Hitchcock, known as the master of suspense, once quipped about the difference between surprise and suspense, saying, You must let the audience have information. Now let's take the old-fashioned bomb theory. You and I sitting talking, we'll say, about baseball. We're talking for five minutes. Suddenly a bomb goes off, and the audience have a 10-second terrible shock. Now, let's take the same situation. Tell the audience at the beginning that under the table, and show it to them, there's a bomb, and it's going to go off in five minutes talk baseball. What are the audience doing? They're saying, don't talk about baseball. There's a bomb under there. Herein lies the scene played out. This woman's eye is getting closer and closer to a sharp piece of wood. From the perspective change, we know where it is going to puncture, and we get another shot to reinforce that. It feels so personal because this view is in first person, and we feel like we are going to receive a piece of wood through the eye as well. The empathy the audience feels here is understandable and fairly universal, as injuries to the eyes are dreaded by just about everyone. Imagining the pain and agony one would go through experiencing this makes the audience uncomfortable, which is exactly what the horror genre is meant to do. If Hostel does anything, it is continuing to apply Hitchcock's theory on suspense with Fulci's dedication to following through to the gory end. In fact, I would say that the most tense, most horrifying moment in Hostel is one that doesn't end with gore whatsoever, but rather this scene. Now, for the most part, Hostel is a film to show many grisly scenes in it. But what exactly is it that makes this film torture porn? 
To summarize Hostel, it is a film about two themes. One is the idea that money can buy people for pleasure in the most dehumanizing ways possible, and about how people feel a right and a privilege to be able to do so. The story follows two American friends and their friend they met along the way from Iceland, who went to Europe to have sex with hot European women. The language they use is disrespectful, misogynistic, and fairly dehumanizing. They didn't come to Europe to participate in cultural lessons or just be friendly and have some sightseeing. The film makes it clear what they came here to do. The importance of this intro is to draw a comparison with the revelation near the end. There was a secret business organization dedicated to finding people for rich people to torture and kill for fun. To this organization, it's just business and the people they have captured are hardly people. Human beings are being chopped up, burned alive, and pummeled to death by these wealthy people who also see these humans as less than human. Just toys to use for fun. I'm explaining this plot to reinforce that this is not the depth that a term like torture porn describes. Hostel is a brilliant film that uses its intense sequences of violence and gore to be suspenseful and to make a brutal point in its narrative. And it seems strange that this artful interpretation of splatter would be reduced to something referred to as just some torture porn. But this goes further than just hostel. Splatter is often overlooked, just seen as something that gore hounds and bloodthirsty theater goers look for, and that is about all the depth that they have. But what is the response from these critics in the face of a movie like the 2012 Korean splatter masterpiece, I Saw the Devil? A little context for this scene. The man with the rope in his mouth is a sadistic serial killer, and amongst the victims he has had, one of them was this man's wife. He discovered his wife was dead by seeing her decapitated head hauled out of a river. He hunted this man down and found that it was impossible for him to take revenge on a man so evil he had no fears and treated his vengeance like a game. But he remembered one thing, and that was the killer's family. He was protecting them, keeping them distant, and cared enough about them to leave them out of his affairs and maintain a good enough reputation to not make them worried. In this scene, the serial killer would be slain, using his own family as a proxy to murder, and his family would find the decapitated head of their loved one, just as he had found his own wife. It is a story of blood, violence, extreme gore, and has lots of twists on the way, but it is ultimately about one man and his revenge, and how this path of destruction changes him into a bit of the monster he was chasing. He doesn't move on from his grief. He doesn't feel fulfilled in his accomplishment. If anything, his quest for revenge made his life even worse than it was before. Once again, my question is, what exactly makes that torture porn? Leaving horror for a bit, gore is used outside the genre as well. Saving Private Ryan uses gore to illustrate the horrifying realism of war, to provide a better understanding of what exactly American soldiers were sacrificing in World War II, and the heroism they should be remembered for, as well as the cruelties and evil war brings out in people. The Passion of the Christ controversially attempts to emphasize what its title suggests, that Jesus Christ suffered horrifically, almost unimaginably, all in order to save the souls of every Christian follower. And it is not only a gory film, but it is regularly re-watched by millions who would also suggest that a movie like Saw is just another batch of torture porn. David Edelstein also throws The Passion of the Christ under the bus, bringing his argument to a classic question horror creators face all the time. But why did it need to be so violent? To answer this, I will borrow from Quentin Tarantino. Why 
the need for so much gruesome graphic violence? Why not let us imagine Because it's a little so bit? much fun, Jan. Really? Get it? Oh, really? Okay, I'd like to see you walk down the street and get attacked by some kids who've just seen you. Oh, movie. but you saw me. See, Jan, you're all messed up okay. because you're talking about real life. Oh, and I'm I see. talking and about the 12. movies. You gotta kids get it straight. Now, if you wanna talk about the movies, we'll talk about the movies. Okay, and kids talk about real life, we'll talk about real life. Honestly, there are a lot of examples I could give of splatter films being brilliantly beautiful, like The Loved Ones and its depiction of obsession, dehumanization, and what it means to be nothing more than a fling. But there are also plenty of splatter films that are just good gory fun, like Tokyo Gore Police and its wildly depraved costumes and set design, or Dead Alive, Peter Jackson's anthem and tribute to basically gore itself. There are also plenty of splatter films that desire for realism and to put the audience in the unflinching eyes of sadistic madman like the infamous guinea pig or red room movies or experience the horror of what it would be like to be hunted by a maniacal psychopath like an inside or high tension horror is meant to make the audience uncomfortable which ironically enough is almost the opposite of what porn is intended to do and that's without fully going into the effort and artistry that goes into splatters, practical effects, costume design, makeup, hairstyling, and various scenes. In the end, splatter isn't a genre for everyone, and there's nothing wrong with that. But it is one thing to say you just don't like a genre, and a completely different thing to dismiss the artistry of violence in cinema. Splatter is a genre of horror that has good movies and bad movies, just like any genre that exists, really. If a film providing enjoyment to its audience is what makes it pornography, then every film becomes porn at one point or another. If splatter films make people this uncomfortable, they should be celebrated for doing exactly what they intended to do, not disrespected.